thank you for staying a bit longer to talk about this for our web extra. Felicia, there was, we had Rick Miera, Representative Rick Miera on last week, and Good. he put forth a bill last year in the legislature um, that would create community engagement teams. And unfortunately it was vetoed, but talk about that idea and why NAMI thinks this is an important thing to pursue. A, creating, or a, a community engagement team, the purpose is to provide an alternative to family members, community members, and friends, besides calling 911 and engaging the police. On these teams, there would be one behavioral health professional. They would oversee the, the team. There would be a social worker who is knowledgeable in the services available. Uh, and uh, helping that individual get connected with services and then there would be a peer, somebody who understands they've been there, they understand, they get it. By peers you mean someone living with a diagnosis themselves? Okay. Yes. Correct. Thank you. Okay. Uh, all three members of the, of the um, community engagement team would have specialized training mm -hmm. that enable them to de-escalate volatile situations, build understanding and relationships in a short period of time. I talked to my loved one about this, and he would actually like to be on a CET someday. I mean, that would be really, because he would be a peer. Is the idea that they could, they might be called when there's a, a situation where you might otherwise call 911, or they also would be available when things aren't necessarily in crisis mode? That's, I think that's kind of the key. You know, like I said before, when, when I've taught this family family class, one of, the, one of the overriding themes I always hear in, you know, in these classes uh, is uh, that people are frustrated that the only help they seem to be able to get mm -hmm. is when there is a crisis situation and they have to call 911 and the police come in, hopefully the CIT. Uh, but they really need something that they can do. When you have a loved one who is very psychotic, for example, but maybe they're not uh, doing anything that presents as a danger to themselves or others, which is usually when the police right. get involved. Well, it would be nice for these family members to have some, some place that they can reach out to of uh, something like a CET that can go and engage with someone to try to help them get the help they need. Not a forced thing, but j just a support, a wraparound support system that, that will help them get that assistance before things turn to the point where you have to call 911. What do you think about uh, that idea? I, I think it's a, it's a wonderful idea, and I would put it together with the uh, outpatient assisted treatment that we've talked before with the Kendra's Law. So what, uh, say an individual is hospitalized, patient is ready to be discharged, so part of the commitment that we, the caregivers, would, would have is to assist this individual in, 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 if, if there is a crisis using, using this model. Mm -hmm. So I think it would be part of the treatment plan for this judge. So we would support. What is the likely, so we've, we've, we're done with this legislative session this year, so what is happening around this idea? Is it, is it going to be pushed again? Can we do it on a community level? We can do it on a community level. We do not need to have state or federal legislation to make it happen. So if communities say this is important, and uh, that will be one of the things that I will be advocating for. I wanted to ask you, in addition to the walk coming up in May, you uh, also have something called um, Stand Up. Stand oh, Up for yes. Mental Health. What is <laughs> mental Health, what yes. is that? Stand Up for Mental Health is, um, Founded by David Grenier, he lives up in Vancouver, British Columbia, and he teaches individuals living with a diagnosis to, to uh, learn and perform stand-up comedy. Mm -hmm. It is an awesome way for an individual who's dealing with the devastation and the trauma of a mental illness to stand up to their mental health issues, and it is so nice to have something positive mm -hmm. when there's so much that's negative that's happening. But Stand Up For Mental Health shows that individuals living with a mental illness can be funny and entertaining. They are smart, they're engaging, and it will be a wonderful evening. It'll be May 29th at the African American Performing Arts Center. Oh, that's great. Okay, well we will put, I'll put uh, information about this and resources. If you all have resources, I'll put it up on our okay. website. But I appreciate you all coming and talking about this. Thank you. Thank you for having us.